the law of demand states, more of a good will be bought the lower its price, less will be bought the higher its price, ceteris paribus. What does it mean? All the law of demand really says is that there's an inverse relationship between price and the quantity demanded. Price goes up, amount bought goes down. At a low price, people are much more willing to buy. At a high price, people don't want to buy much. What about that last part, the Latin, ceteris paribus? Well, ceteris paribus means all else being equal or other things the same. So the law of demand says that there will be an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded as long as nothing else changes. Look at it this way. If you're a consumer, what makes you willing to buy or not willing to buy a product or service? Of course, price affects your willingness or unwillingness to purchase, but what else? Income? Sure, the amount of income, particularly your disposable income, will affect your willingness and or ability to buy. Luxury or necessity? Absolutely. What about differing tastes and preferences? Naturally, your tastes and preferences help to determine your willingness or unwillingness to purchase. But what determines your tastes and preferences? Of course, your personal tastes and preferences have been a lifetime in the making and are always changing, but a few determining factors are age, gender, religion, social status. What else affects your willingness to buy? How about weather or climate? What about expectations for the future? How many factors are there that affect an individual's willingness to buy or not? The number of factors is endless, and I, for one, don't like to think about an infinite number of things at once. If I'm going to model the willingness to purchase, I want to narrow my focus to only two factors. What will the two factors be? Well, think back to the law of demand. The focus is on quantity demanded and price. Quantity demanded, or what you buy, of course depends on all the factors just mentioned. Quantity demanded is a function of price of the product, price of substitute products, price of complementary goods, it depends on the income, it depends on the weather, politics, all this stuff. But if I want to focus just on quantity demanded and price, what do I do with everything else? Well, remember that all else constant part? We recognize that all of these other factors are important to the decision, but for right now, we'll assume that they're constant and unchanging. How does this work? Well, imagine that you are in the market to buy a house. You consider a lot of variables, right? Your income, mortgage rates, which neighborhoods have good schools and other amenities. Is this just a starter home or will you be there for a long time? And of course, you will look at home pricing. Suppose you've already given thought to your budget, mortgage rates, neighborhood amenities, whether a Walmart's being built nearby, etc. And you also find that right now, Housing is going for $150 a square foot. At this price, and given all those other factors, you have determined that you would be willing to purchase a 1,500 square foot house. What if the market slows down and price per square foot drops to $100? Keep in mind that all the other variables will be unchanged. Same income, same mortgage rate, same neighborhood amenities, same everything, except that the price per square foot has changed. The law of demand says you would then be willing to purchase more square footage, well, wouldn't you? Perhaps 2,000 square feet. What if the market headed up again such that the price per square foot increases to $200? All else constant, you would not be willing or able to buy as much house as before, maybe at $200 per square foot, everything else remaining the same, the quantity demanded would be more like 1,000 square feet. In the end, if you were to plot out each of these price-quantity combinations, you would start to see the inverse relationship described by the law of demand. Now, of course, there are more possible prices than just these three, but we can see the general pattern now and other prices would fit in with that existing pattern. Do you notice that these points are starting to trace out a line? Well, this line, really this collection of all possible price-quantity demanded combinations, is the demand curve. Next time, change in demand versus change in quantity demanded.